Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Scott, who's been supporting this channel as a Golden Pig tier patron. I truly can do this without the support for amazing patrons like Scott, so again, Scott, thank you so much. And again, this episode is a break the bank of a deck tech that recently came out, so if you haven't seen that deck tech, make sure you go check that out first, because this episode won't make as much sense without that. Regardless, if you have seen that episode, you know that this break the bank is on Ramos Dragon Engine, and with Scott's personalized deck tech, it is a mazes and victory build. So just as a quick reminder, Ramos is a 4-4 dragon with flying that says whenever you cast a spell, put a plus one counter on Ramos Dragon Engine for each of that spell's colors. And by removing five counters, you get to add double wooward to your mana pool and activate this ability only once each turn. So in this deck, we're utilizing a ton of multicolored spells to actually get more and more counters on Ramos so we can smack our opponents for a ton or get a ton of mana from them. And of course, with many of our spells and with the mana from this commander that we can cast even more spells, we can ramp a ton to get more and more gates into play. So of course, with these Break the Bank upgrades, we're going to include even more cards that can help us get to that goal even quicker. And as a quick reminder, with a Break the Bank like this one, the budget is upped all the way up to $100. And as another reminder, the link for this deck as well as the original deck list are in the description below. Now with all that said, let's jump into what cards we're adding in. First up, Crop Rotation is a fantastic addition to this deck. It's an instant for just a green mana that says, as it will cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a land. Search your library for a land card, put that card on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So of course, with this, we can easily exchange one of our lands that isn't either a gate or maze's end into either a gate or maze's end. This card is very simple, very effective, and yeah, can either help us close out a game with this maze's end victory or help us begin it by actually going and getting maze's end. Speaking of which, next up we've got Expedition Map, an artifact for one that has pay two, tap, sacrifice Expedition Map, search your library for a land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. So this is a very simple but very effective land tutor. When we need to, we can just sacrifice this by paying two, going and getting again either a land or Mace Zend into our hand, and we've got plenty of ways to get those lands into play quickly. So yeah, adding more and more of these land tutors into our deck is going to help increase our consistency. But a massive game-ending addition to this deck has got to be Scapeshift. Scapeshift is a sorcery that costs two green green, and it says, Sacrifice any number of lands, search your library for up to that many land cards, put them on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle your library. This card can literally just win us the game if we're set up correctly. Keep in mind, it does say sacrifice any number of lands, so yeah, don't sacrifice your gates or mazes end if they're in play, just sacrifice all your other lands to go get all the gates that you need to win. Now, obviously, before sacrificing land, you're going to want to float whatever mana you can float, and yeah, you very well might have enough mana floating to activate Maze's End with enough gates in play after you cast this to just win from there. So yeah, this card is absolutely incredible in this deck, and yeah, with our upgraded budget to $100, we are able to squeeze it in even though it is an expensive card. Another card that is fantastic in this deck and can basically just win us the game as well is Reshape the Earth. It's a sorcery for 6 green 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 and it says, search your library for up to 10 land cards, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. This can literally just go get us essentially our entire win condition. It can go get us 10 gates or 9 gates in Maze's End, whatever we need. Uh, yeah, this can just help us essentially set ourselves up to win. And though 9 mana is a lot, we have an absurd amount of ramp in this deck so we can get there very quickly. So yeah, with our upgraded budget, this is definitely another fantastic include. Speaking of which, another great addition to this deck is Azusa, Lost But Seeking. She is a 1-2 human monk that simply says you may play two additional lands on each of your turns. This is absurd land ramp, and we've got plenty of ways to get lands into our hand, especially gates into our hand, so we can get them out very, very quickly. So yeah, things can get pretty out of control with this in play. 
Next up, a somewhat similar card is Wayward Swordtooth, which has the exact same mana cost, but is a 5-5 Dinosaur with Ascend. So if we control 10 or more permanents, we get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. And yeah, in a format like Commander, that's really easy to meet, especially for a deck like this that can get a ton of lands into play very quickly. And of course, that's exactly what this is going to help us do. It says you may play initial land on each of your turns. Now, Wayward Swordtooth can't attack or block unless we've got the City's Blessing, which again, we can get to quickly, but even if not, it can still help us get more and more lands into play quickly. So this can help us ramp while getting more gates into play, and yeah, also just be a threat on the field once we've got that City's Blessing. And finally, we're actually going to be adding one land into this deck with the World Tree. The World Tree enters Battlefield, tap, and it can tap for a green. It says as long as you control six or more lands, land you control have, tap at one man of any color. Now it also has paid double Wooberg, tap, sacrifice the World Tree, search your library for any number of god cards put on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. I could be wrong, but I don't believe we have any god cards in the actual deck, but uh, that's not why this is here. Even though obviously that lines up perfectly with Ramos' ability, but still, it's, it's not here for that reason. What it is here for, though, is it's a perfect way for us to fix our mana. Again, for this deck, it is incredibly easy to get six or more lands into play very quickly. And then with this in play, all of our lands can tap for one mana of any color, so we don't have to worry about mana fixing anymore. Which, of course, can be incredibly helpful with a deck like this where we're running a ton of multicolored spells that have different costs, and yeah, this can just really help us out. But now that we've talked about the cards that we're adding into the deck, let's talk about the cards that we're taking out. Now, as I like to say, just because we are taking cards out does not mean that they are bad cards. It's just that, well, we have a 100 card limit for our decks and uh, we're adding cards in, so we've got to take some out. So we're going to be cutting Clever Conjurer, Kelpie Guide, Reap and Sow, Scale the Heights, Gear for Ori, Arboreal Grazer, and a Forest. Again, not bad cards, just the cards that we're adding in are going to be better and more impactful in this deck with the upgraded budget. But now that we've talked about all the cards that we're adding in and the cards that we're taking out, let's talk about the price. So with the Break the Bank version of this deck, it comes in just under budget at $99 even. Also keep in mind that this estimated cost does include basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you've already got those basics, there's some extra savings there. And speaking of extra savings, you might be able to save even more if you buy this deck on TCG Player and utilize heavily played and damaged cards because of course those cards need a home too. That being said, do keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thank you again, and have a good one.